Welcome back everybody. Today, as I'm sure you guessed, we're going over this rifle right here. This is a Stag 10S. So I had never used a Stag rifle before this. This is the first one I've ever laid my hands on, I think, in person. I've seen them some places, but um, basically this review came about because I was talking to Graham from uh, GB Guns. It's a YouTube channel. For those of you that don't know, I'll put a link uh, somewhere here on your screen for you guys to check them out. And uh, basically talk about how the large frame ARs can tend to have a lot of problems, particularly with reliability. And uh, he was telling me about the stag that he had, and it was this rifle right here. I believe he might have had the key mod version, but he was saying it was awesome and I needed to check it out. And so I contacted the folks at Stag, asked to get one of these in for review, and voila, here is the review. So we've been putting a bunch of rounds through it, and what we're going to do next, of course, is let the dogs take a look at it, make sure it gets their seal of approval, and then test the accuracy, put some more rounds through it, come back in, get into the details, and at the end, we'll let you know what we think of it overall. different loads to test the accuracy with. First and foremost is going to be free munitions. This is their 175 grain hull point boat tail. It's remanufactured ammo. Uh, five rounds in the gun and just for those that don't know, free munitions offers a 5% discount on any of their ammo over at their site with the code in the bottom of your screen there. So target downrange at 100 yards. Um, CTK Precision Rest, Midwest Industries, or correction, American Defense, uh, 34 millimeter mount with the primary arms one to eight platinum on the rifle. And uh, other than that, everything's stock. So we'll see what we can do. All right. Next up, we're gonna run some uh, Gorilla ammunition. This one here is 175 grain as well. Sierra Match King load. And I think actually everything I brought out today is 175 grain, so sorry on that one. It's just what I had sitting on the ammo shelf. So Gorilla, very good stuff, as you guys who watch the channel know, so we'll see how it does in this rifle. Brownells mag, for those wondering, for mag compatibility, always an issue, or a discussion point rather, with uh, AR-10 style rifles. Pretty good from here. Next load up is the Federal 175 grain gold metal match. I believe this actually uses the same bullet as that Gorilla round we we're just shooting the uh, Match King boat tail hull point by Sierra. But it's a different loading, so that can totally change the accuracy. So we're always just going to test them out and see how this particular rifle prefers each round. This is the Lancer AWM, by the way. Let's go check them out. First up, we had the Freedom Load. Shot pretty well, as you guys can see. Center to center, we're right at, right at an inch and a half with that group. Then we came over here with the Gorilla. Definitely had a flyer of some sort over there. Not sure why. It is what it is. We don't reshoot groups here. And uh, center to center, right at two and a half inches with that one. Federal group here appears to be the best, but we'll see. And it is. Center to center. Let me make sure. Right at an inch and a quarter on that one. So overall, uh, for you know mil spec trigger, I think it shoots pretty well.
Getting into the details of the rifle, we have the VG6 Gamma muzzle device out here on the end. As you guys can see, we have some large ports there on the side and some uh, slits on the top of it and on the bottom. It's closed off to prevent any sort of dirt and dust kicking up from your firing position. So this uh, muzzle device here is nitrided, but it has some pros and cons to it, as you guys can imagine. So it does a good job at reducing the felt recoil and muzzle rise. However, it makes it loud and very blasty, and you're going to have a lot of flash at night. So pros and cons to it. I also fired it with a flash hider throughout the video. So you guys can probably see the difference in the recoil and pulse. It does soak it up pretty well if you guys are kind of recoil sensitive. So moving on back. The barrel on this particular model is the 16 inch barrel and one thing I like about it is the profile of the barrel. So um, it's not a government profile barrel, it's sort of like a continuous taper medium profile barrel. It has a 1 in 10 twist, it's made of 4150 CMB steel, so the mil spec stuff and then it has chrome lining. So um, the specs on the barrel are great, it's MP tested as well and then you guys will see that we have a uh, low profile gas block on there. It's not pinned, I know that's something that some folks certainly would like and it would be nice if it was. but I checked the um, gas block uh, screws and they are loctited in there so that's a good sign as well and then of course it is a mid-length gas system and you have the mid-length gas tube going through the handguard there as you guys can see. Speaking of the handguard it is a 13.5 inch handguard has m lock slots on the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock position as you guys can see has these nice lightning cuts along the sides to keep it relatively lightweight and relatively cool. I didn't notice any sort of heating issues at all while shooting the rifle, which I do like. It has a quick detach sling attachment points on the three, six, and nine o'clock positions, as you guys can see. And uh, they are reinforced. I do like that. I know some of the um, sort of like military uh, rail makers out there are reinforcing these with steel these days, but if you have aluminum and you reinforce it, for most of us anyway, you're not gonna see an issue with it. Uh, I didn't see any issues using it throughout the testing. So I also wanna point out that on top of the rail there, we have the 1913 spec rail. However, it's hollowed out as you guys can see. Again, that's just gonna give you a little bit of weight savings, which is nice on these uh, large frame ARs. The bolt on the rifle is made of 9310 steel and it is MP and HP tested. So for those new to uh, bolt carrier groups for ARs, uh, they fire a proof round through it. And that is the HP process, the high pressure round. And then after that, they do the magnetic particle inspection, which basically is tracking for any sort of micro fractures in the steel to make sure there's no weak points or anything like that. And uh, these are all individually MP and HP tested, which is nice. Um, the carrier itself is made of 8620 steel. And both the carrier and the nitride, or rather, and the bolt are nitride finished. Uh, they use a QPQ process, but essentially it's just a form of nitriding. So it's going to give you good corrosion resistance, uh, surface hardness, and wear resistance as well. So um, the gas key on the bolt carrier has good staking, as you guys can see there. But overall, no issues at all, no complaints about the uh, bolt carrier group. The upper receiver kind of looks like it's billet, but it's not. It is a Forge 7075T6 aluminum upper, as is the lower, I should add. It also has Type 3 hard anodizing on there, and we have a forward assist, which I do like. It makes me feel warm inside to tap that thing, but I know some of you guys have no use for it, and that's just fine. Um, it also has the T markings on top, so that way you can use it as a reference point when mounting optics, sights, things like that. And of course, it's slick over there on the left side. It also has M4 feed ramps cut in there that match up with the barrel's M4 feed ramps. One thing I didn't mention about the upper receiver that I should have is that just like the lower, it is proprietary to stag arms. So while some uppers out there might work on it, don't expect them to because of the way the slant cut here on the rear of the lower receiver works and of course the rear of the upper receiver as well. So they're made to work together, um, but again, they're Forge 775 T6 like I just mentioned. So over here on the right side of the lower, we have the stag roll mark. Fire safe, all the standard stuff. And then one thing I really like is this flared mag weld. Very easy to do mag changes. And like I say in just about every AR review, um, all ARs should have flared mag welds. So there's just no reason not to. So uh, moving on, we have it in large trigger guard here. So that way you can fire using gloved hands, uh, which is probably more important with the 308 uh, ARs because I think a lot of folks are going to use these for hunting purposes. And this one would fill that role just fine, of course. Um, the trigger, standard mil spec stuff. So nothing fancy there. Uh, the selector is on the left side. It is not ambidextrous, but I suppose that's a good point, good time rather to point out that this uh, rifle is made in left-hand configuration. So if you want a left-hand eject version of this rifle, I'll put a link for that down below in the video description as well, but it's the same rifle, same specs. The difference is, of course, that it has a left-hand bolt, left-hand ejector, and it has the safety on the right side of the lower receiver as well. So uh, moving on back, we do have a standard 308 carbine buffer 308 
uh, carbine length spring. And then we have the 7075 T6 aluminum uh, extension. It does have a dry film lubricant in there and it is a six position adjustable extension. It is staked on there, which certainly is nice. And we have this little uh, sling attachment point here on the back should you choose to use that. Now the stock it comes with is the Magpul ACS stock. It's a good stock. I think I actually have a re dedicated review of this stock. It has the storage there for batteries. As you guys can see up top, it also has this little storage compartment there if you want to put anything in there. I'm not sure what you'd put in there, but I'm sure some folks do. It comes with a little QD attachment point as well that you can put on either the right or left side of the stock. And you guys can see it has a nice wide cheek rest there for if you're laying down behind the rifle and prone or something like that for a long time. It is very comfortable. I do like it. And then, of course, it has the slanted uh, angle that I talk about in a lot of my reviews that I like as well. Rifle or rather stocks with that sort of angle to it do tend to just kind of roll up on the shoulder a little bit more naturally, at least in my opinion. We touched on a lot of details, but we left a few out, so we'll try to cover those here real quick. Uh, it does come with a Hogue grip. It's a rubber overmolded grip. It has finger grooves. A lot of people like it. I like it better than an A2 for sure, but it's not my favorite grip. But of course, that's a super easy fix should you want to do that. And then the charging handle on this rifle is a standard charging handle. Um, so me personally with uh, the 308 ARs or 6.5 Creedmoor or whatever, um, I like a little bit of an oversized charging latch because running the action, say you have a malfunction, um, on an AR-10 is a lot harder than doing it on an AR-15. It's not super hard, it's not like it can't be done, but the oversized latches do really help with these rifles much more so than they do on, say, an AR-15. So, speaking of malfunctions, this rifle here had a grand total of zero. We put between 800 and 1,000 rounds through it, mostly the uh, Freedom Munitions 150 and 147 grain stuff, and uh, we used different magazines. We used Lancer magazines, Magpul magazines, and Brownells magazines, again, Zero malfunctions. That ran perfectly, just like uh, Graham from GB Gun said it would. So kudos to you, Graham. Kudos to you, Stag, for making this rifle. I do appreciate a well-functioning AR-10. So can't do any better than that. There's some other things. Uh, number one is weight. I talked about the contour of the um, barrel and the handguard and all that stuff. So this rifle here comes in on my scale anyway at 8.1 pounds. So not super light, but not super heavy either, sort of somewhere in the middle. And then uh, all the SAG Arms rifles come with um, a transferable, or rather, yeah, a transferable lifetime warranty. So if you buy it and sell it to somebody, they get the lifetime warranty as well for anything. So that's certainly a good warranty. You can't do any better than that. And it also comes with a PMAG and a hard case that ships with it. So can't complain about that. Now, price-wise, this one's gonna to come to market right around $1,500. So again, compared to some of the other competitive options out there, it's priced pretty well, in my opinion, for what you get. You get the Forge 7075 T6, upper and lower, uh, Chrome Line 4150 barrel, good bolt carrier group like we talked about. You get this model device, which is relatively expensive on, an, on its own. You get Magpul stock, all that stuff for that price point. So overall, I think Stag absolutely has a winner here on their hands, um, no doubt about it. I've been impressed with the rifle in just about every way. Um, as you guys saw, of course, accuracy-wise, it shot well also. So not sure there's too much more for me to say. I'll roll in some more shooting footage at the end, but that's going to wrap it up here for the review. If you guys have any questions about the rifle or anything that we talked about here, you can always post those questions down below in the comment section. However, uh, my Facebook page is definitely the best place to get in touch with me if you guys have questions that you need answered because I tend to see the messages and questions over there much more so than I do here. Um, but that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you aren't subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you like what you saw. And I hope to see all of you in the next video.